The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, has a centralized reporting system for enteric disease and waterborne outbreaks called the National Outbreak Reporting System, also known as NORS. The associated NORS form is used to report foodborne disease outbreaks and enteric disease outbreaks transmitted by contact with persons, animals, or environmental sources, or by an unknown mode. This form is used by local and state health departments and then submitted to CDC. The purpose of this training is to provide an overview of the NORS enteric form and its components in order to make it more straightforward to complete the form. CDC has a more detailed guidance document available on their webpage at www.cdc. Gov NORS. We will not cover the NORS Waterborne Outbreak Form, Form CDC 52.12, in this training, nor direct data entry into the NORS system. The NORS Enteric Form has five sections, general, etiology, settings, animal contact, and food, as indicated in the tabs at the top of each page and in the section titles. The current version is a fillable PDF. We strongly recommend you use this version because it includes helpful pick lists and other tools to improve data entry. Let's walk through each section of the form now. There are five required fields in NORS. They are state report ID, date first case became ill, primary mode of transmission, reporting state, and the total number of primary cases. The electronic NORS system will not allow you to proceed in the form if these fields are not completed. At the top of the first page of the form, there are two boxes for outbreak identification numbers. The state report ID is very important as it allows a state or local health department to track outbreaks outside of NORS and then link it to the CDC report ID. The CDC report ID will be generated when the outbreak is entered into the NORS electronic system. This is a six or seven digit numeric code that you should then write on the form. A new sequential CDC ID is created as soon as the outbreak report is entered into NORS. Primary mode of transmission. You must fill out the primary mode of transmission for each outbreak. The NORS electronic system will not allow you to move ahead if this area is left blank. For every NORS enteric outbreak, you should complete the general and etiology sections of the form. The additional sections that need to be completed are listed next to the mode of transmission selected. For example, for person-to-person -person outbreaks, you should complete the general, etiology, and settings sections. Sometimes it is difficult to decide when to check other or unknown transmission. Check unknown mode for an outbreak that is caused by an enteric pathogen, but for which there is insufficient epidemiologic, environmental, or laboratory data to link the outbreak to a specific mode of transmission. You should then complete the general, etiology, and settings section. Investigation methods. In investigation methods, indicate all methods used during the outbreak investigation. It is very helpful to enter comments, especially if you choose other as one of your investigation methods. Dates. In the dates box, you are required to fill out the date the first case became ill. Again, the NORS electronic system will not allow you to move ahead if this area is left blank. You should also complete the rest of the date fields. If you do not have data for a particular date field, it is fine to leave it blank. Geographic location. In this area, indicate the reporting state. If the exposure either occurred in multiple states or if cases resided in multiple states, list those states under the heading Other States. The same is true for the reporting county portion. If the exposure either occurred in multiple counties or if cases resided in multiple counties, list those counties under the Other Counties section. And for place of exposure, enter the name of the city, not just the type of place, but do not include proprietary or private facility names. Primary cases. This section is for describing your primary cases, that is, those who were exposed to the primary source of the outbreak. Indicate the number of lab confirmed and probable cases here. Refer to the confirmation guidelines in the CDC guidance document for what should be included as a confirmed case. Then, 
enter the sex, outcomes, and age distribution for the primary cases. Note the current form has a place for numbers and percent. The numbers here are more important than the percentages, as NORS can calculate percentages upon entry into the electronic system. Remember to check your math. Each of the totals needs to add up to the number entered in estimated total primary cases. In the next two parts on page two of the form, you will enter information about the incubation period, duration of illness, and symptoms for your primary cases. Incubation and duration. The incubation is defined as the time between exposure and first onset of illness. Duration is the time from onset of symptoms to symptom resolution. Don't forget to circle or click if you're using the fillable form, the unit of measure, and enter the number of people for whom you have information. If you only have information for one case, the shortest, median, and longest incubation and duration should be the same. If you do not have the information, check the unknown box at the bottom. Symptoms. Symptoms are listed on the left side of the table. You can also add symptoms next to the asterisks. In addition to indicating the number of cases with symptoms, it is important that you include the total number of cases for whom you have symptom information. Secondary case. A secondary case is one in which the person was not directly exposed to the original food, water, animal, person, or environment that was implicated in the initial outbreak, but had another exposure that led to illness, most commonly person-to-person -person contact with a primary case. If you don't have secondary cases, you can leave this section blank. The EHS net section should be completed if an EHS net evaluation was done by including the EHS net evaluation ID, the outbreak report, and EHS net report can be linked. The traceback and recall section should be completed if applicable. For the reporting agency section, enter the agency, contact name, and phone number for the person filling out the NORS paper form or the NORS fillable PDF. When entering the NORS form electronically, this section is auto-generated based on the contact information your state has provided to CDC. General Remarks In this area, you can briefly describe important aspects of the outbreak, including additional details about the investigation not collected by this form. For reports in which the mode of transmission is environmental or unknown, it is helpful to include the outbreak setting. The etiology section should be completed for all outbreak types. Even if you don't have a confirmed etiology, you may still indicate the suspected etiology. Indicate an etiology as often as you can. For instance, if you have used Kaplan's criteria to determine the etiology is likely norovirus or ruled many pathogens out to indicate viral gastroenteritis, you may still indicate that etiology is known. If the etiology is truly unknown, you may mark the box no and indicate whether specimens were collected, how many, and what they were tested for. Complete the etiology table for all confirmed or suspected etiologies. In order to indicate the type of specimen in which a pathogen was found, use the numbers 1 through 4 as shown at the bottom of the table. Isolates. For bacterial pathogens, enter information for at least three representative isolates from an outbreak case or cases in the table when applicable. Most often, this will be state lab ID number, followed by a CDC PulseNet outbreak number, if applicable, and the PFGE pattern. The setting section should be completed for outbreaks that are person-to-person -person or due to environmental contamination or other unknown exposures. First, check one box for the major setting of exposure. Then, depending on the setting, you can enter the attack rates for groups exposed in that setting. You can choose a second exposure setting as well, if applicable. The animal contact section should be completed for outbreaks related to animal contact. If animal types were identified as the source of an outbreak, they should be entered along with the setting of exposure, for example, zoo. If setting and animal types are unknown, be sure to enter comments as to why animal contact was the selected mode of transmission. 
The food section should be completed for foodborne outbreaks. If you do not know the food vehicle, check the box to indicate it is undetermined. For the food specific data table, fill out the name of the food if known or suspected. You do not have to fill out boxes if you don't know. For instance, if you know or suspect that the food vehicle was a sandwich, but do not know which ingredient was contaminated, you do not have to choose a contaminated ingredient. Also, indicate the number of cases exposed to the food. For the boxes asking about reasons suspected, method of processing, and preparation, you should refer to the CDC guidance document, which is linked to at the bottom of this page. Enter foods that are highly suspected, even if they are not confirmed as the vehicle. Check the location where food was prepared and the location of exposure or where the food was eaten. Multiple locations can be selected for each of these sections. Contributing factors. To complete this section, it is necessary again to refer to the CDC guidance document in order to reference contamination, proliferation and amplification, and survival factors that may have contributed to the outbreak. This information is very important to help understand the root cause of foodborne outbreaks and be able to focus prevention strategies. Contributing factors selected should make sense in the context of the outbreak and its etiology. They should not simply be a list of all the violations or issues that were found at a facility. The rest of the NORS form should only be filled out if your outbreak meets any of the following criteria. One, a foodborne outbreak where the food was cooked at a school and the exposure took place in a school. Or two, ground beef was implicated as the food vehicle. Or three, salmonella was identified as the etiology. Or four, eggs were identified as the source. As a reminder, there are five required fields, state report ID, date first case became ill, primary mode of transmission, reporting state, and total number of primary cases. Without these five fields, the outbreak cannot be entered into the NORS electronic system. When you are done with the form, enter the information into the NORS system or send it to the designated person in your state or agency who will report the information into the NORS system.